of you, the few, the proud, and the brave here. Hey, we welcome all of you that are watching online, and I can say I don't really blame you today. Uh, I do like coming to church and being part of the, the family, but I understand today not, not being here for various reasons, and I'm glad that you've joined us online, and we welcome you online. So we come to worship the Lord today, uh, and He is with us. The flowers today are given by Chuck and Lois Reed. Quite interesting, you know, they signed up for this a while back, and so they gave them to just say Happy New Year to our family of faith, Happy New Year to everyone. But if you're familiar with Lois, you know that she lost a very dear friend this week. Her friend Marsha, that she works with at the Chamber of Commerce, they, they are ding and dong, you know, they are Chip and Dale, they are close, and her and Marsha passed this past week, and it's really been hard on Lois. I please encourage you to keep her in your prayers. If you can send her just a text and remind her we love her. As Chuck said this morning, she's so stoic, but this one has hit her hard. It's been difficult, and so the flowers today are also given in loving memory of Marsha that she worked with. It's a harder last name, so I apologize for not... Uh, Valdetero, Marcia Valdetero, uh, who passed this week. And that's been really hard on Lois. The funeral's on Friday. And so the flowers today, we also uh, are for Marcia in memory of her as well. Church office going to be closed tomorrow. On Tuesday, we need help at 9 o'clock. We're going to undecorate the sanctuary at 9 o'clock on Tuesday. And then at 10 o'clock, uh, we're going to go right from that into rice and beans. Uh, and we do need to make rice and beans to get ready for faith in action. Uh, you know, we should be able to undecorate the sanctuary probably in an hour. But the whole deal is the more people that are here, the faster it'll go. So if you can come join us, please do that. That would be very helpful. Friday with faith in action, we'll be meeting at 10 o'clock on Friday to set up uh, the clothing on the tables and all the household items. Uh, and then on Saturday, January the 8th, will be Faith in Action. 9.30, the food preparation will begin. And then at 10 o'clock, open the doors so the people can come in to get the meals and the food and uh, have access to the items. So it's a ministry to our community. Uh, and so thankful for all that helped make this happen. 
Please be mindful also that Celebrate Recovery will meet on Tuesday night, continuing to meet. Hey, this is exciting. This, this Tuesday night will celebrate the fourth anniversary of Celebrate Recovery here at our church. And I want you to know it's just an awesome ministry. It really is helping people you know, make changes in their lives, hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Dinner's at 6, worship is at 7. Any one of us can come to those things, and there's good fellowship, and, and it helps connect our church into that ministry. They have been having more new people in recent weeks. Eight o'clock, they go into small groups. A lot of times I dismiss myself before that because that, that's where they need their opportunity to share or there's opportunity to share. Small groups could be a great thing to be a part of, but that's a wonderful ministry, and we're very uh, thankful for that ministry. Gail has started back doing aerobics and uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday and on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, tomorrow church office closed so she won't be here tomorrow, but Wednesday at 8 o'clock, Virginia comes to join her and there's been others at other times. So if you wanted to do some aerobics, uh, Wednesday or Friday at 8 o'clock, you could have some company and Gail would really welcome that. She would appreciate that. Uh, this this week and next week at the end of the weekends i'm going to be involved in men's retreat so i ask you to pray for me in being involved in those retreats i'm wearing the mask just because i want to stay healthy and be able to do those things and then also as a minister just mindful of wanting to be concerned for others in that um, and so that's why i'm doing that any other announcements we need to make today we are collecting gloves, hats, blankets. We take them to Newgate, but also there's been times we've distributed them from here even before they get there. So know that uh, we're collecting those and be mindful of that. Hebrew box, always keeping going. Let's stand this morning and worship the Lord. Give him praise today.
place of faith is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey, Tyler, before you sit down, we are doing communion today, so you need to get that. And there's a handout little diagram thing. Ron and Sander, did you get stuff for communion? Hey, Tyler, would you also get that for Ron and Sandra? Also appreciate it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, the communion right, right back there, the communion. And then also the, the handout thing will be needed as well. It's a little diagram you'll see there. Any, yeah, like that. Anybody else need communion elements? Yeah, Betty. We're get, yeah, good to get the. Yes, thank you, Tyler. And then anybody need the diagram? And Jim, if you'd if you'd come and raise your hand if you need that, it's gonna be a part of the sermon when we get there. Sorry. Ron and Sandra probably need that. I think yeah, they got that. Very good. Thank you, Jim. We uh, come to a time where we share our joys and concerns with each other. And uh, so what are our joys and our concerns today? So thankful for a new year, a new beginning, God's grace upon us, leading us into this new year. Very thankful to be a part of this family of faith, too, uh, entering this new year. So that's part of the joy of my life. What about you, our joys and our concerns? Yes, Betty. Mandy, so we're... Sweet. So the bummer is it's in Conroe. That is so good. So we celebrate with Mandy and we're thankful for that. Yes, no doubt. Glory to God. And so, like you say, the bittersweet kind of a little bit because I was hoping she might get up here with you and with us. So, yes, I know that's good for her to have that for sure. wisdom and discernment for those decisions we you know with debbie's dad we have made that journey up you know you i've made it as a minister but boy to get it up close and personal can be you know it is a challenging thing so pray for god's grace and his blessing in that journey yes i'm certainly praying for my mom it's just a hard hard time for my mom sandra yeah, with the fire. Yes, man, that has just been horrible. Uh, and Debbie and I are hoping to go to a conference that's right by where all that happened. I've been, yeah, you know, I've been arranging things up there. So when they started naming things, I, I was aware, you know, of all of, all of that area, but it's just south of Boulder. But just some great destruction there within our own community. We lift up the Tant family with Tiffany this past week, and that that you know that accident tragedy of around her death she's a senior at white oak and they live here in gladewater so it's impacted really both of those communities and i believe that the funeral service i think is going to be today so lifting up that family uh and remembering them also yeah sandra Which is a part of the thing of usually with the shots, it makes you have a milder case. Debbie and I, again, I'm wearing the mask just because Debbie and I are aware of so many people that are having it. And the, the, the pattern over the overall is that if you've had the vaccination, it's a milder case. There's a friend of hers that worked with Dana 
who got it and her and her husband are not vaccinated and they have had it rougher and then because of Dana passing there's been a fear factor for them you know knowing that they didn't get vaccinated and they've had it pretty intense neither one having to been hospitalized but I hope you're also just aware that man the hospitals even around here just overwhelmed supplies are running low a lot of different things so just trying to be as prepared as we can again that's part of why I'm back to wearing the mask and I have two very important things these next two weekends so just trying to be sensitive to that and then the other side is out of concern and care that you know don't want to be one of those that doesn't know they have it or something you know uh, and those type things that that's one of the things that bugs you on that uh, is you know those things have happened in those situations where they there a bunch of people in their family had it because there were spreaders going with it yes so we pray for our nation just with COVID overall because this is so in, it's so contagious that it's shutting a lot of things down and affecting the economy and affecting different things so our prayers and certainly we lift up our nation overall just overall we lift up our nation with these things in mind let's go to the Lord in prayer today Lord, we thank you that you are a gracious, loving, and powerful God, and that we can come to you, and that we can lift up our prayers, and thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers, and that, that Lord, you're involved in answering them, even when we don't see that or don't know it. We know we can trust you uh, for the way that these things go. Uh, Lord, we pray for our nation, especially. We pray for the leadership. We pray just on so many different areas. Uh, and pray that there would be revival in the land, Father God, then renewal, spiritual renewal. Help us to get a vision for that and to see how we can be a part of that, Father God. And so, Lord, uh, lead us as we live day by day. Father God, we pray for those that, that may be struggling with COVID and sick, Father God, or families that, that are in situations dealing with dementia and Alzheimer's and having to make decisions, Lord, give wisdom and discernment you know, for that, Father God. Lord, we lift up where there's been loss, Lord, thinking of Marcia this week and praying especially for Lois in that, but thinking of the young woman, Tiffany, and her family. Above all kings, above and all created things. Thank you, Lord, for mysteries solved and mysteries yet to be revealed. You were here before the world began. Thank you, Lord, for technology when it works and when it struggles. Lord, give wisdom to William and discernment up there as he tries to figure it out. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray. As Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, we come to a time now where we normally take up the offering, but uh, because of COVID, we've switched to the basket in the back. We're also very thankful, you know, that we're able to give online and, uh, you know, through our church website, you can get that set up. And, and I want to tell you, one of the things that's really awesome is there's a number of our church members that do this. And just like when it's cold or there's COVID concerns, it's one of the things that helped see us through last year. OK, uh, and God's provision. And so know that you can give online. And you can get that set up through our church website. And it's not, I'm going to say it's not that challenging. I like putting my check in the offering plate, but I'm also fixing to just learn how to do it online so I can vouch for it that it's easy to do. So they can do it either way. And so know that and be aware that, that that's there. And I, I'm so thankful for the finances of our church through 2021 and pray for God's provision as we go into 2022. Are you with me? 
All right. With that in mind, let's stand and join together as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'm hoping that uh, over the course of this year, from time to time, we can have testimonies, uh, things to say what God has done uh, in our midst. And so today, kind of in that vein, I want to give you a testimony, and it does flow into the message. Uh, all through last year, there was a guy who kept asking me when I was going to Guatemala. He said, because I have money to pay for you to, Guatemala, to go to Guatemala. Well, because of COVID and everything like that, you know, never 
I don't, there were most of the time you couldn't have even gone if you wanted to go because of how everything was with travel. It was very interesting because uh, on the early part of this week, um, I got a call from a young woman in Guatemala, and she asked me if I would come and help officiate uh, her wedding in March. And she is a really dynamic young woman, and she is marrying a young man from Colombia. And they have been in ministry. They were in ministry in Guatemala for a while, helping with Arrows of Light. And we were sending young people out across Central America. But then they went to Colombia, and they were down in Colombia in ministry there. Uh, but now they're about to get married. And so they're going to go back to Colombia and being involved in missionary training there. So it's pretty exciting. And I agreed. Then I started thinking, should I call that guy... You know, that told me, hey, you know, when are you going to Guatemala? And, and honestly, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to call him because I know that's what he would have wanted. But lo and behold, two days after she asked me to go, all of a sudden that guy emailed me and he said, bro. And, and that, was, that was all he said, bro. And he said, I put $2,000 into your into Arrows of Light for when you go to Guatemala. And he had no idea that I had just been invited he just wanted to get the money out of his hand, you know, and get it. So it was sitting there for whenever I did decide to go to Guatemala. And I think, isn't God amazing? You know, isn't he amazing of how he had been putting that on that guy's heart all the whole time? And then I get invited. I agree to go. And just out of the blue, he put the money into the account. Uh, I want to remind you that we are blessed. What? To be a blessing, okay? And I know we covered that last year, but here at the beginning of this year, we're going to go back to that. And, uh, you know, in teaching, repetition is good. And then what you want to do when you teach is you want to try to take it a little bit deeper or give a vision for it at a different level. And that's what we're going to do. And that's why I'm hoping that each one of you have a copy of this in your hands. Because for today and over the all the weeks of... January, we're going to be looking at this and, and getting a visual kind of of what it means for us to be a blessing. And so some things that we're going to talk about in Scripture is going to go back, but then we're going to take it on and take it deeper, okay? First of all, we're going to go to Genesis 12 and read verses 1 through 3. This is the promise to Abraham. And the Lord God said to, to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And what? And you shall be a blessing. So blessed to be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Another thing that's interesting to me with technology for all of its good and its bad. Uh, it's been wild to me because in the past week or so, I've talked to somebody in Cambodia, there with Samaritan's Purse in Cambodia. They were in Myanmar, but they had to leave Myanmar because of the strife. And they're still in touch with the people in Myanmar, and their heart is just really heavy for the suffering and everything that's taking place in Myanmar. But now they're in Cambodia. I've been in touch with somebody from Germany, in touch with a young woman from Guatemala who's marrying a young man from Colombia, and also in close touch with somebody from Costa Rica. And so I just get amazed at how, you know, in these days and times, you know, 20 years ago, that would have been very difficult you know, to have that, and it's amazing with technology that we can, and that in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I'm, I'm, that's there for every one of us, okay? God can do that uh, in, in ways that, that that's done. We're going to go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, okay? Ephesians 1, 3. Remember last year we went through Ephesians, and every time we would read this verse, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And that's so key, in Christ. But we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now I want to go to Isaiah. And in Isaiah chapter 12, we're going to read verses 2 through 5. This that you're going to read and that I'm going to read is from the New Living Translation. 
this year, as I start reading through the Bible this year, I'm going to read more out of the my, personally in my personal Bible reading. Read more out of the Living New Living Translation, and that may show up more for us as a congregation too, because I like the wording quite often. So. Isaiah 12, 2 through 5 from the New Living Translation. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in Him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. Hold, it, hold that one there. With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. Other versions say, with joy you will draw from the wells of salvation. But one of, the, one of the things of this lesson is for us to know that, that we can learn how to draw from the fountain or the well of salvation. You also, I call it the infinite resources of God and that we can draw upon those infinite resources of God. With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day, you will sing, Thank the Lord, praise His name, tell the nations what He has done. Let them know how mighty He is. Sing to the Lord, for He has done wonderful things. Make known His praise around the world. And what a privilege you know, for me in my life. And sometimes you can be a part of that either by going or helping send somebody or by praying for someone. Just like for the person in Cambodia. I feel like I have ministry going in Cambodia right now, praying for them uh, and, and involved in, in touching the world uh, for, the, for the cause of Christ and the glory of God. Okay? So I want to begin this year reminding you that in Christ, we are blessed to be a blessing, okay? And over these next week, I want us to take a deeper understanding of how we connect with God by faith in Jesus under His Lordship so that we can draw from the wells of salvation. We can draw from God's infinite resources. God is a God of love, and there is no end to His love. He's a God of grace. His grace is infinite. God is a God of power and might. There's no limit to His power. He's a God of strength, a God of forgiveness, a God of peace, a God of joy, and they're infinite. Okay? Every one of His resources is infinite. And so we can draw upon it, draw upon it, draw upon it, and we never cause God to run out, and He can keep just supplying and to us and to others there's no limit to the resources that God has I want you to know that I'm a very visual person even as I say that it's funny because I'm a horrible artist I can't draw anything worth a flip I love music I'm not a musician uh, but I sure enjoy listening to music I like it when we're choosing the songs and it's not just deciding to come over the sound system randomly uh, you know but uh but, but being a visual person, it's interesting because God will work with us in, in how He designed us and in, in being a visual person. So I went one mission trip, I was suffering for Jesus, having my devotions out by the pool, iguanas around, howler monkeys up in the trees, Costa Rican coffee, drinking Costa Rican coffee, suffering for Jesus, okay? But having my devotions. And as I was having my devotions, I was thinking about how you're there in that country to represent Jesus and to share His blessings, you know, to be a blessing there to the people of Costa Rica and thinking about the day and the days that we were there, what God was going to do. And as I was having that prayer time, God gave me this vision, a visual of kind of how blessed to be a blessing works, okay? It may, it, you would laugh if you saw how pathetic my drawing was that I drew because you'll notice the name down in the right-hand corner, Julia Farrell. That was one of the young people in my youth group. And when I taught it to them, she took it and she ended up drawing this. Her drawing, her drawings on a sheet of paper this big, look, this big. I started to bring it, but I was thinking, one, I don't want to lose it. I don't want anything to happen to it. And, I, and you wouldn't be able to see it because I can hardly see it when I'm like looking at it. I have to have glasses just to look at her little thing. But from that, I've blown that up. And when I do this teaching, I, I make a copy of it 
and I get it about this size for us old people we can see it a little bit better and then also it fits real perfectly in your Bible if it becomes meaningful to you but so when I'm in Costa Rica uh, and the, the Lord helped me kind of lay this out and, and as you do over to the left hand side of the page you see God right God and under that his infinite resources love joy peace power forgiveness grace strength uh, Anything that you need, healing, God can supply, and, and so the infinite resources of God. How do we connect to the infinite resources of God? Through God's Word, through prayer, through uh, faith. Faith is so critical for us connecting to the infinite resources of God. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 says, But he who comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he, God, is the rewarder of those who diligently and earnestly seek him. God is the rewarder when we seek him, and, and the reward is him blessing us out of his infinite resources, but we have to have faith. Okay? Faith helps make it happen. Prayer, worship, and fellowship. These are the ways, there's probably more, but those are my key ones in my life that I connect to God and His infinite resources, and they flow into my life in those ways. You see the center circle there? You see the cross? When I used to draw this, or in the handout I have, it would just have a line there under the cross, a line, so that people could write their name on that line very intentionally under the cross. Okay, Next Sunday, the sermon is going to be about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we put ourselves under His Lordship is a key part of the journey. Do you remember last week I had that, uh, that diagram right here, this diagram last week? And especially when you get up here, there's starting, there begins to be dynamics about getting under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and surrendering to His Lordship and doing the things that, that God uh, would be calling you to do. The young woman that, this week that I talked to that's in Cambodia, when she first got out of college, she went to Washington, D.C., and she was going to be a mover and a shaker in Washington, D.C. She secured an internship that, that was hard to get. And she just knew she was going to go to Washington, D.C. and make a difference. She did not understand how dog eat dog and how intense. And, you know, you expect people to be nice or people of their word. And it was so backbiting. It was so undercutting that, that after a little while she went home in a very bad state of heart and mind because of how brutal it had been in Washington, D.C. God brought healing to her life. She had actually ended up after that time getting baptized. I got to be a part of her baptism. And, and lo and behold, then she began to her, surrender her life to the Lord. And to me, what's glorious is she's a mover and a shaker for the kingdom of God and the glory of God, which is way better than anything you do in Washington, D.C. And... Uh, and how she has grown in the Lord has been a beautiful thing to watch. But a big part of that is from a self-directed life to coming under the Lordship of Jesus and seeking His will and His kingdom uh, above even, even the, her own desires and her own heart. And so next week we're going to talk about that. Then you see these circles over here to the right. You see those circles? Those are people. Every one of us have people with whom we're connected. Am I right? Hello? Yeah. And, and, and to think of the ones that we want to be very intentional about praying for and sowing into them, either through us or just through our prayers, sowing into those people. Normally for me, what I like to do is go down above the bottom two and draw a line above the bottom two because I'm going to leave those blank and especially starting the year I'm going to go down I'm going to draw a line and I'm, I'm saying Lord I'm looking forward to the people that you want to bring into my life this year this year that you're going to bring into my life I want you to know a number of years ago five years to be exact five years ago at Wesley McCabe 
uh, after our Tuesday afternoon children's ministry, the parents come pick the kids up, and I looked over, and there was a young man down at the end of the sidewalk, and he had come to pick up his little sister from our thing. So I went over and I introduced myself and met him, and his name was Adrian. And I could tell Adrian was probably somewhere 18 or 20 years old. He actually had ended up, he was 19. Uh, but I asked Adrian, I said, hey, are you going to school or are you working? And Adrian said, I'm a day trader. I was kind of like, oh man, because I, I, in my life I've known four people that day traded and all four of them lost money. Two of them lost a little bit and two of them lost tons of money, one of them endangering their marriage because they lost so much money. So I was curious, like, and I was concerned. I also was a little concerned when you're on Southside Longview, I was also a little concerned how he might be funding his day trading, okay? I said, hey, let's go to lunch sometimes. I would love to hear your strategy for what you do with day trading. And so we agreed. We set up a lunch, and we went to lunch. So after we kind of sat down, got going, I said, hey, how's your day trading going? And he got a kind of funny look on his face, and he goes, I'm not day trading anymore. And I said, what happened? He goes, I lost all my money. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, I had sold my car for $2,000. And I thought I would take that and invest that, you know. And he said, it didn't take me long to, to lose that, so I don't day trade anymore. And uh, a lot of questions answered on that. So then we began to talk. One of the discipleship to tools I use with young people is I said, hey, before we go to lunch the next time, I'd like to ask you to, to make a list of 25 things you want to be, do, or have in your life. I said, that's a great way for me to get to know you. It's a great way for me to pray for you. And, and it's a wonderful tool. I mean, I do it in my life still. 25 things you want to be, do, or have. So the next time we came together, he read me his list. And wow, he had an amazing list. And I really loved the way that he thought, okay? He was a really good thinker, and I could tell that he was a really good thinker and processor. So we've continued to meet, but since that time, he's gone through Marines uh, and, and, and went through boot camp, and now he's in National Guard. This past semester, he went through fire school and EMT training, and now in two weeks, he tests for his EMT test. Really big deal, but he went through fire training and EMT in one semester, he has real estate, and he's working with real estate and, and, and fixing a house. But the, one of the last times we met at breakfast, I looked at him and I said, Hey, Adrian, it would be good for you to go back and redo your 25 things list. I know a lot has changed, you know, since you first did that. And he goes, Man, that would be a good idea. You're right. But then he, but then he looked at me and he goes, But I know what would be first on my list right now. And that kind of surprised me. I was like, yeah, what would be first on your list? And he said, first on my list would be to represent Jesus well in everything I do. Wow. What an amazing journey. How awesome to me, too, to get to have a front row seat watching God change. Because when he was 19, I can tell you I'm not even sure he was saved at that time. He had grown up in the Catholic Church and it didn't mean anything to him. And, and, and it's amazing the conversations that he and I have. Even in the Marines, they would give him about five or ten minutes right before they turn, you know, get in your bunk five or ten minutes before they turned out the lights. And he started reading the Bible and he sent me. He said, hey, can you send me a Bible I can read and understand? <laughs> and I knew he had probably gotten a hold of a King James uh, and was trying to you know, make sense of that. So I sent him uh, a more readable Bible, uh, and, and he was reading that Bible every night. And to see the journey of that, here's, here's what I need to tell you. And this is why faith. God could have some people for you to meet this year. Hello? And, and for you to have an idea... Of, of what you would do blessed to be a blessing because those journeys can take different forms different things I pray for my grandchildren you know that's to me that's a part of that praying for my grandchildren being with my grandchildren even yesterday God gave me the coolest idea to do something about something I'm going to try to do for my grandchildren uh, it, it might involve artwork with me and if that's the case I'm going to need God's grace or I'm going to give it to somebody else for the artwork but uh, 
excited for what God stirred in my heart. Uh, and so this over here represents people in your life. You can either on here or some other place make your list of the people that are in your life that you would like to see God bless. Are you with me? Just like Mandy is on my prayer list, been praying for her, so so exciting to see God open that door. But I also want spiritual blessings and her to grow in her relationship with God so that she'll find a church there in Conroe in that area that would help her grow deeper in the Lord. And that'll be a part, you know, of praying for her as I pray for you. Uh, and, and so we do this, knowing the people in our lives that we're praying for, for God to go deeper and having kind of an openness if God wants to bring somebody in that, that we would have to really connect with to go deeper in our relationship with them. Okay? And, and that's quite interesting watching how God does that in different ways, how He connects us with people. How do we connect with people? We can connect with people through prayer. Do you know what? You don't even have to ask somebody if you can pray for them. TC, really been praying for you, praying for your mom, Judy. Uh, and and y'all are on my prayer life, and I didn't even ask your permission. I just started praying for you, and uh, it blesses me to pray for you. I look forward to us going to a lunch or a breakfast sometime soon, okay? Know that that's on my mind. If you can help push that forward. Next two weeks are really tough for me, but after that, let's see what we can do, okay? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. But we can pray for somebody. You ever go to the grocery store, and it's kind of busy, and there's lines, Right? And so you look at the lines and what are you looking for? Shortest line or the fastest line? And it's really great if it's both. Okay? So one day I go to the grocery store and man, it's kind of a busy day. Every one of them have lines. I watch for a minute and I see the one I think is the one. Okay? So I go get in that line and, and all of a sudden I start noticing, man, all the other lines are going faster than the one I got in. And, and I, I kind of look at the, the checker, and man, the checker, she is ticked off. She is hot about something. She is banging things around and doing everything. And then somebody asked for cigarettes. And you'd have thought you'd, they'd ask her to go to the moon and back because she got all ticked off about having to go get cigarettes, you know. And man, my line is standing still now. And, and I see somebody walk out the store that was getting in their line the same time. And so I'm about to go get in another line and the Lord says, no. He said, you're in this line to pray for that checker. You ever... You ever looked at the checkers names lately to pray for them to see their name I'm always amazed at how many letters of the alphabet can be, get used in one name these days and like sometimes even have trouble like thinking how would you say that you know like you know you you, you want to think about greeting them by name but you're not even sure you could say it right but you know so just started praying for that person and and I started realizing that the Lord had wanted me to pick that line just so I could pray for that checker so I started praying for her Man, I pray for her. Nothing's changing. She's just banging stuff around. I get up there, and so I said to her, Hey, just really been praying for you, you know, just to have a good day. <laughs> you know, and, and so, you know, what would have really been nice in this story if I could say I started praying for her and that by the time I checked out, peace had come, right? But what really happened is about the time I got done, she kicked me in the rear to hurry and get out of the door and get out of her face and quit trying to talk to her and be nice because I'm mad. And I was like, oh, I mean, okay, you know. But, but we can pray for anybody, anytime. And some, what I've always say, what's the best gift that we can give someone? Prayer. And so we pray for people. It's one of the ways that we connect God's resources to them. The other thing is just loving people is a way that we connect with people and share God's love and His infinite resources is by love. We can serve people. And that can connect them to God and to His infinite resources. We'd want them to see how much God loves them by serving them. And then also by fellowship, is that we fellowship with, with them. Uh, I do, as you can tell, enjoy fellowshipping around meals. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a great way to have conversations and to fellowship. And uh, I, I love that with believers or people that are growing in their faith. It's just helping people grow in their faith, whatever that looks like. So these are the ways uh, that... that that we can connect with other people and then hopefully connect them to God, okay? Uh, 
last year, one of the sermons I preached was, there is a river, okay? There is a river. Because one of the things I want you to see on this sheet is a river, okay? And from, from God and His infinite resources, that river flowing to us, then flowing through us, out to other people. Can you see a river? Okay? Uh, because next week, we're going to focus on this circle right here, and that under the uh, that that Jesus is Lord, He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we submit under His lordship and His authority. The week after that, we're going to look at these up here of how we connect to God. We're going to talk about the the uh, God's Word, faith, uh, God's Word, faith, prayer, worship, and fellowship. We're going to talk about those. Okay. Uh, I have to a little a little thing as I'm talking about that. When I first drew this, I drew it as lines. But when the girl Julia drew it, she made them all connected, which later God talked to me about them being tubes. Okay? Like being tubes that that things flow through because then over here we have the tubes that connect us to other people of prayer and love and service and fellowship and how the resources of God can flow through us, blessed to be a blessing, okay? Blessed to be a blessing. We hear that, we heard that phrase last year, but this little drawing is, is, is meant to help us visualize what does it mean, blessed to be a blessing, okay? In January of 2010, uh, I, I met a guy that was really in a rough spot. His name was Ken. He came to our church, and, and I met Ken. And the first time I met him, God gave me a, a word to speak over him. I had just read in Joel about how God would restore the years the locust had eaten. And I wrote something like that to Ken and told him I was going to stand in the gap and pray for him on that. Uh, Ken watches us online basically every week. He says he loves this church, feels connected with us, although he is a leader and very involved in his church uh, in Utah where he's at. But uh, sometimes when I preach, if I have a handout, I have to send it you know, to Ken in advance or he'll get on me because he doesn't have it. So I said, hey, Ken, I'm going to be using that handout about connections. I said, do you need me to send it to you? He's like, oh, no, you don't have to send it to me. He said, that's right in my Bible, first thing. He said, I have that word you wrote for me the first day that we met, and I have that right there in my Bible. One of the things I pray for you is that, that God, and I say that just because it's amazing, you know, God working, and you get to watch God work in somebody's life. And so Ken was one of those that God brought and connected us to, and now he is one of my dearest brothers in Christ and excited that he's going to be at our men's retreat in two weeks uh, here in Tyler and I appreciate the effort that he's going to make for that but just appreciate the blessing of that relationship over these years has been so strong and so good God has people he wants to connect you with this year I want you to be ready for that so that you can know how to access the resources of God to flow through you to that person because there's a river okay Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll give us vision for this, vision from you and your spirit. Uh, just how you have worked with me to see the work that you do in us and through us. That we are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We talk about being blessed to be a blessing. And that Ephesians 1.3, what are the last two words of Ephesians 1.3? In Christ. In Christ. See, that's how the kids make money. You know, like, like that's how, yeah, that's how they get that. So today somebody did that. So he said, I'll take two dollars. I'm like, two, man, jump up there, okay? Uh, but, but so in Christ, that's why we celebrate communion today because it's in Christ. The blessings of God flow to us through the sacrifice, the love of Jesus for God and for us. So we're prepared for service of word and table. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law, and we have rebelled against Your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray in silence. Lord, lead us by your Holy Spirit. Bring conviction where there needs to be conviction. Lord, bring forgiveness and grace. Cover us with your love and your righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the good news today. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you today. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it's a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. You are the creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Lord, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, and he gave thanks to you, Father. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you, Father. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so today, here at First Methodist Church Gladewater, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So Lord God, we would ask you today to pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. In that, in that last sentence right there, I want you to, to think how we can visualize things. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. That's the flowing into us on that diagram. That's the flowing into us that we, the forgiveness, the grace that we receive through the body and the blood of Christ, that it's flowing into us. And then that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Can you see the diagram like in your mind, how it, how it fits right there? So many of the things that we'll talk about and that we do fit that pattern. Make them be for us, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now you'll take the cup and you'll take the cellophane and you'll pull just the cellophane back to access the wafer. The wafer for us is symbolic of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the body that was broken. Take and eat. Feed on him by faith in your heart with great thanksgiving today. Then you'll pull back the foil to access the cup. It's symbolic of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you and for many and for me and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us take and drink and be thankful. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
as we prepare to sing our closing hymn, uh, Betty today has said, I would like to join the church today. And so, so what we want to do here, even before we move forward, is to know that Betty, you're a baptized believer in Jesus, right? And so what we would ask you is, will you support the cause of Christ here at First Methodist Church Gladewater through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? then we rejoice today to welcome you. You're a part of our family of faith already. I guess it becomes official now. And we have been surrounding you with love. And we're going to continue to do that. And know that in this season of your life, even though there's challenges and blessings and all the mix, that we're with you on your journey of faith, celebrating what God is doing in your heart and your life. And I really can say I see God working in your life. And I know just in hard times and comfort, grace, and strength, He is He is leading you forward. And so we rejoice today. Amen? Amen. When church is over, I, yeah. We do. We celebrate. So when church is over today, I hope that you will go and, and, and let her know uh, that she's welcome and what a blessing. Let's stand to close today. child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is ask a favor of you this week and what I want to ask you to do is uh, put this one in your Bible okay slide it in should fit at some point this week in a prayer time I'd encourage you to take it out and look it over and then in that just ask God to guide your eyes like does he draw your attention to the infinite resources does he draw your attention to the things that connect him to him or the circle or how we connect to others or thinking about the other people that we're connected to in our lives. Let God kind of direct your eyes uh, as you do that. Uh, hey, Anthony, did you get one of these? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, Gavin, you got one? Keep them in your Bible and just see if God can use, use that, okay? I don't know why it came to me that I've had things I taught and youth many years later would call me, and I pray God might do that for you too because I love your hearts and we love having you guys here today. Y'all are awesome. You rock. You really do. What a blessing. 
isn't it cool when the youth can sit in the balcony and that's not all you hear the whole time? Isn't that right? Isn't that good? Is it say amen? And Betty, we do welcome you today. For all of you watching online, we welcome you. When we close here and talk about being part of Christ's family, you are with us in this. Look around for just a moment. Aren't we blessed with each other? Who are we? We are Christ's family. And we've come to worship the Lord and to give Him praise. Now we are sent by God to be holy and holy Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I do pray blessings on you this week, and I pray that God will give you that vision of his river and it flowing in us and through us into a lost and hurting world. Be blessed as you go today. Stay warm. Amen.